Senator Elizabeth Warren scrambling to figure out how to pay for Medicare for All. Just what was the impetus for her to embrace Medicare for All in the first place? And a new Quinnipiac poll has her holding strong in the Democratic primary. We're back with Colin Rojero, a Democratic strategist, and Chris Prudholm, Republican strategist. So we got a very interesting report from the Washington Post out yesterday. Basically, an economist and Elizabeth Warren's team, they're scrambling to try and find how to pay for Medicare for all. They want to give an answer. The crux of the message is she does not want to say, yes, taxes on the middle class will be raised. That is something Bernie Sanders has come outright and said. Part of the interesting thing, actually, from it is they said that from the wealth tax, you know, her signature proposal, is that all that money has been allocated. So they don't exactly know where to go. I mean, Colin, I, it seems that she is really trying to box her way out of not having to say, yeah, the taxes are going to go up, but the overall cost will go down. Mm -hmm. And I don't really understand why, because I think that's actually quite an effective message. I, don't, I mean, what do you think? Yeah, look, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I think yeah. that she is trying to not be in the increase the Democratic taxes right. box to separate herself yeah. from Bernie, because their programs are very similar. Sure. Right? But I think the but reality the same is... Thing. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they are. I, but I think Elizabeth Warren's appeal has been she's seen as very authentic mm -hmm. at, at, throughout this campaign, and that's why she's been able to surge against Bernie. I would just tell the truth. Yeah, taxes are going to go up to $300 a family, but right. you know what? You're not going to have a health bill at work anymore or personally yeah. and that may balance out or you may end up two three hundred dollars a month positive what do you think chris yeah, i agree with actually uh, ironically agree with yeah. said. i mean but I, I think authenticity does not give results you look at uh, big ceos and billionaires like ron Barron, who's a lifelong democrat and was talking about elizabeth warren saying he's great you know likes her as a person but her policies and, and more effectively mm. for the uh, for, for the economy for the financial community it just it just does not work mm. and it, they're not supportive of her I yeah mean, but isn't that a good thing i mean that's what they want like they don't like she doesn't want the financial community to support her. Like well, she kind of, that's like she can add for Elizabeth. Now, right? <laughs> well, well, I'm, well absolutely, yeah. absolutely, of course. But yeah. I, mean, I mean, but again, look what ha look what happened when, uh, within. I know it's two different subjects, but increasing in minimum wage and yeah. obviously now people hours are getting cut. So it's the same hmm. thing. You have a great idea, but there's no plan. Yeah. Does well, it make sense? Ryan, I know you have a lot of thoughts on this. Well, yeah. one of the huge problems with this entire structure is that if you don't reduce costs in a bigger way. Uh, even all of the uh, menu of items that Bernie Sanders listed to pay for Medicare for all don't actually pay for it yeah. entirely. And that's the big secret, and, and Bernie Sanders has not been pressed on that because he was willing to say some taxes will go up on yeah. middle class families, but uh, overall costs will go down. And so people just, and, and since he's not the front runner at the right. moment, people have let that go. But if, but if you actually dig into it and you say, okay, here are the menu of things that uh, that he says raise enough revenue to pay for Medicare for all. Here's the cost of Medicare for all. You do the math, you're like, oh, yeah, there's, there's actually a gap. There's actually, no, and, and actually it's, still a gap because they, they're not hammering doctors. You're and absolutely hospitals. right. I mean, that's the one. I talk about this on the show all the time, which is the truth is doctors and nurses get paid way more in the United States than they do in Europe, like forty percent. I don't know about nurses. Well, it's like it's like forty percent higher than they do in France, right? I mean, France has pretty good health care. Yes, but, but, but so, go ahead. In yeah. France, they have much, you know. A much more generous welfare state, sure. etc. Yeah, I don't think nurses here are living high on the hog, but yeah, do yeah. Doctors look, this is this is not just this is yeah. an overall cost yes. problem. If you walk into a pharmacy in any country in South America or in Europe and you go to get the exact same drug, mm -hmm. you're paying a lot less than you are yes. in the United States. Yeah, so this is an question. overall cost but problem. This is the thing that the Democrats don't want to talk about. You 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 can hammer pharma, which is going to be enormously hard, but you should hammer them into dust. Mm -hmm. You can ha you can eliminate insurance companies. Great, you should do mm -hmm. that. That's a hundred billion a year. We're we're looking for trillions mm -hmm. to get the rest of that. Hospitals Doctor. and doctors, <laughs> and those are extremely popular yeah. people mm -hmm. back home with right. their with their members. People of Congress. People love their doctor, right? Colin? They do. Yeah. And their nurses. Yeah. And their nurses. They're like these fair. sweet and docs aren't <laughs> overcharging me. <laughs> it's like no, they are. Bill. Though, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your insurance company. That's the right. insurance company, not me. <laughs> yeah, right. Nurses, we've got yeah. covered. National yeah. Nurses United, yeah. very strong right. supporters of Medicare yeah. for all. But th those hospitals, when they start running ads saying they're going to close their hospital, right. not well, saying you can't start it. They're doing it already. That's already. That's already the biggest employers. In a lot of Th that's already happened. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think that, you know, there should be an honest and open conversation about Medicare for All anyways. There's yes. no way Medicare for All and the entire rebuilding of the medical system in the United States gets done in two years or in four years in a single mm -hmm. term. Can we move in that direction? Can we start with the public option and then make right. ground? Of course we can. Is mm -hmm. it going to happen in four years? Let's be realistic. It's not. And they should start telling the truth about that, in my yeah. opinion. Well, what do you think? That I do agree with. I think what yeah. we really need is overall comprehensive plan that makes sense. And first of all, I think have a Congress that even understand how the healthcare system works in any way. But I think we really need the 
kind of step back and really look at what's going to work and be authentic and say, okay, yeah. and to try to get results to say what is going to work and what's not, and be realistic. I mean, it's not going to work for everyone, to be honest with you. It's not going to be effective for everyone. Yeah. So, it's not. so I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think Paul Krugman is actually right. So he wrote a column, <laughs> about, he wrote a column about Elizabeth Warren and saying basically that she was trying to placate her flank from the, you know, from the progressive left on the embrace of Medicare for All. It wasn't for single-payer health care back in 2012, whenever she ran uh, for the Senate, and that by doing that, she's really boxed herself in because she doesn't have the money. She can't allocate. And you're right, Ryan. She doesn't want to piss off the doctors. And so there's, there's, this is but a, it's, it's a Gordian no, knot that nobody, nobody can to tie. Piss off the doctors. Exactly. It's like it's the, it's a Democrat. It's like the third rail leaders. of Medicare yeah. for all, right? But so. you got to get, get them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. I, listen, I'm right here yeah. with you. All right, so let's also talk about we got a new Quinnipiac poll, very interesting poll that has come out on the national race, showing we got it up here on the screen. 28% for Elizabeth Warren, 21% for Joe Biden, 15% for Bernie Sanders. Margin of error on that, 4.6%. I mean, once again, we do. So there's a couple of general trends here, right? So uh, we don't really know who's at the front. It's either Joe Biden, Elizabeth Warren, depending where he's. Stand. What we can know is that Elizabeth Warren is rising, right? Like that's that's the one thing that we can generally find. But post debate, nothing really seems to have changed. So what is it that you think is fueling that? In my view, it's that Kamala Harris has fallen. A lot of that white liberal support has gone over to her. That may not be a good thing though, because it doesn't show that there's anything in particular her campaign is doing to win over new voters. What do you think? Yeah, look, yeah. I, I have said before that you know her best day was her launch day, and she's precipitously fallen since then. Yeah, and uh, and look, a, a lot of candidates have that same trouble. Like, your best moment, what do you do after your best moment? How does Elizabeth Warren keep up her momentum that she has now? Is it slowing? Maybe it looks like it is a little bit. That's an incredibly difficult thing to do, and we yeah. started this race a long time that's ago. Right. I, I think one thing that's interesting in that poll is that, that Pete is up maybe a little bit, yes. and, uh, and 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 Bernie, actually, even after the heart attack, yeah. had a one or two point bump, according to that poll. Yeah, so, right. very, very and, interesting and things reason. in there. Yeah, yeah. Other he, recent he, polls. No big the heart swings, attack had zero right. effect on him yeah. whatsoever. He was so, no, I agree, zero. So, surprisingly, it was zero. Right. Uh, look, I think that people are just obviously uh, not certain about uh, Joe Biden. I think that yeah. he was, uh, it almost reminds me of Jeb Bush in 2016. Yeah, I think um, so. and, and I think people are just, they're just not certain. That's it. And Elizabeth Warren has kind of uh, grown to be that stable candidate that mm -hmm. people can kind of count on, that, that she kind of, and she resonates with as, as well. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, it's going to be a tough road, but I, I don't think that Joe... Uh, and if he is the nominee, uh, I mean, frankly, I think he's even more of a shield for President Trump. I just don't think that people see it, and definitely does not resonate with young people. He's not. I think it's. I think it's like less than ten percent of young people actually, you know, believe in him or support him. Yeah. So I. It, yeah, but guess what, Chris? Boomers love him, and they vote. <laughs> the, <laughs> and the thing that Bernie still has going for him is that he's still trying to find people that aren't being polled, right. and mm. that he can pull into the electorate. But what's but what Elizabeth Warren has going for her in, the, in all of these polls is that when you go to the second choice. Every single candidate's yeah, sec is. the second is. choice is Elizabeth Warren. It's bizarre. Joe Biden, their second mm -hmm. choice is Elizabeth Warren. If you support Bernie Sanders, your second choice is Elizabeth Warren. If you support Buttigieg or Harris yeah. or Booker, your second choice is Elizabeth Warren. So as these people continue to drop, she's going to continue picking up. Yeah. And she never had she's never had like this sugar high moment like Kamala Harris had on the on the busing answer. She's just risen very slowly. Mm -hmm which makes it harder to knock her down. You know, you go up fast, right. you can come right. down fast. Right. It is an interesting second choice. I, I did not expect that. She recently overtook Bernie Sanders as second choice to Joe Biden voters. But predominantly, we're here in a three-way We're in a three -way race, right? Like, it's a total three-way race. Um, and the real question is where all those other good people go. You're right, Ryan, which is if she remains a second choice to a Pete Buttigieg, a Kamala Harris, and a lot of these other people, then Bernie has got to up his second choice game. Mm -hmm. So he's got to start becoming the second choice for the Andrew Yang voter or the Tulsi Gabbard voter if they don't make it into their thresholds, not only in Iowa, but all the way across the field. And that is something that he's really got to step it up. And and, and it, it comes down to differentiation. So how has he? How how can he differentiate himself? Zay Jelani, who's a friend of the show, he's pointed out that Sanders often when he's on the debate stage, he basically he acts like he's giving a campaign rally. Like he's like, we will defeat. You know, he doesn't differentiate himself from the other candidates on the stage, except for that one moment with Joe Biden. That was an obvious slam dunk, but you got to kind of be doing it every single day. He doesn't seem to have that in him currently. 
I don't know if it's in him or the yeah. way that his campaign is running things. And, and, you know, I think there's been some transition there, and they've been a little bit in disarray in some ways. But if you look at the poll, what I would take from that poll, if yeah. I'm Bernie Sanders' campaign team, is he is seen as the most honest candidate. Yes. Get out there and let people tell that story. Yeah. That's what you need to have happen. Let people say that they believe in you because you've always been about these things. That's his strength. That's the reason why he's still around again. Yeah, I think that's right. What do you think, Chris? Well, I think it's different this time around for Bernie as well. I think last time he had the uh, the big marijuana push going for him, he had, uh, you know, minimum wage and yeah, young people kind of rally behind him. I just don't think he has that magic now, that, that magic in the bottle, so to speak, and, mm. and that there's nothing to, for him to really kind of push. Well, so it's not he did fewer rallies. When yeah. He did that big rally in New York last weekend, yeah. and that, I think, did inject some energy into his campaign. So if he, if you see more of that, you could see some of that magic come back. Yeah. Well, we'll certainly see. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining thank us. You. Really appreciate it. Happy Friday. All right, next week on Rising, friend of the show, Michael Brooks. He helps us make sense of all the news that will inevitably happen over the weekend. And the Hills in the No columnist, Judy Kurtz, will share some of the laughs from the Mark Twain Prize Ceremony. That's going to be fun. All right, make sure everybody hits subscribe. Uh, we'll be back this weekend. We'll keep your eye on for weekend content. Chris will be back in the chair on Monday, and we will see you guys all next week. See you there.